Zach Howard, uh, the artist for the Cape and Wild Blue Yonder, among many other things. He's an awesome guy. Uh, thanks for coming. You're welcome. I, I am special. I, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I died severely retarded, but I do function in normal life. So. so, for the people at home who might not exactly be familiar with you, could you please tell us a bit about yourself, like what you do? Uh, I draw comic books. Um, are we just going to hand it back? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I draw comic books. Uh, I've worked for everyone, Marvel, DC. I now do my own books. Uh, uh, probably my most popular being The Cape that I did with Joe Hill, but uh, the series I'm doing right now is doing pretty well. And uh, that's basically it. Uh, a bitter comic book artist that left the industry and just does his own books now. <laughs> so, really excited. Doing fantastically well. I mean, uh, the first issue of Wild Blue Yonder sold out before it even like had hit the shelves, which is very impressive. So, tell us a little bit about the success of that comic book. Like, how's it going for you guys? Um, the, just could not be going better. We're just got announced we're going to third printing for issues one and two. My P's are very uh, profound. Uh, in <laughs> Uh, so, if you have any full P sentences, please give them to me. I want to try them out. But uh, 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 no, it's going very well. Uh, I'm becoming well known as an indie artist now, which is very refreshing because I can make a living doing uh, independent comics. I'll just talk to you. Uh, and uh, uh, that's about it. I, I just, uh, it's just. The post-apocalyptic story, I get to draw World War II planes flying around shooting stupid people. So, uh, <laughs> uh, it's dream come true. I was going to say, it's a dream come true. Yes, exactly. So, besides Marvel and DC, we've worked with a few indie uh, publishers. So, I take it that you obviously like working with those more than the big guys. Why is that? I, I don't like being a, a, just kind of a spoke in a wheel and when I used to work for DC and Marvel it's you don't get to, I did I was forced to work with a certain group of people and even if they're good people I don't and like my inkers lots of times couldn't couldn't ink me very well and I couldn't get my pencils ready for them and uh, I'm working with studio colors that don't care about your book I'm working with hack writers that are trying to crap out Spider-Man stories as fast as humanly possible so I can just get their 2,000 bucks and then you know, go to a con and pretend they're Elvis. Uh, but, so I went indie and, you know, there's not a lot of money in independent comics, so I, I spread myself out. And then two, I know how hard it is for these, these smaller companies to survive, so if they need a nice cover, I usually work out a deal and give them a cover for half price or something like that. So yeah, I work, I did Aliens for Dark Horse, uh, uh, did some horrible things for Boom Studios uh, uh, and a, a bunch of other crappy little <laughs> companies. So, but some good ones too, like IDW. You know, that's why I stay with IDW. They're good people. So, and they basically just give me carte blanche. I do whatever I want. So, and it's hard to walk away from that. Right, right. So, so you run your own. Yeah, I, I founded uh, with uh, Mike Rach, who writes Wild Blue, and he does Stuff a Legend, and a Hollywood producer named Austin Harrison. Um, we formed a company called Noble Transmission, and basically we're doing our own comic books, and we translate those into screenplays and then sell them to Hollywood and uh, video games and some other stuff I can't talk about. All right, all right. But <laughs> things are going very well, and next year there will be a lot of news that just that. Scary contracts I have to sign that say never talk. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, is, there, is there anything coming up that you can't Should we talk even about? talk in this? Or? I don't know. I mean, yeah, it, it helps. It helps. It does? Okay. But not like this. <laughs> 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 yes. um, is there anything you can tell us about that's coming up? Uh, well, we, we're definitely working on stuff in the Hollywood end that takes a while. Um, and then on the multimedia end, um, I'm trying to figure a way I, I can legally say what's going on. Um, we're Alien, working on Alien or Undersea Adventure. What now? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, no, yes, no, no. Does it involve aliens? It, it's not the, the, so the content. Yes no. It's not a content thing. It's uh, 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 the type of media. I had to sign non 
non-disclosure agreements while we're working on uh, the possible product. Yeah. Um, it, but it's going to be multimedia platform wobbly under. That's all I can say. It's, it's a rap it's, album. Browsing. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's a concept album. I just locked myself in a hotel room <laughs> and uh, brought a four track, and I just uh, really just let myself express my comic books in rhyme form. So, uh, yes. No, no, it's just it's uh, 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 ways to digitally deliver the comic book in a fun, exciting format that's different than the actual comic book that you hold in your hand. And we're working with a very, very big company who's very scary, but they have uh, more money than the United States. And they just, <laughs> I, it, it's, I just, I, the, the contracts I had to sign just scared me to death, so I can't say anything right now. But we are working on multimedia everything, and everything's going very well. It's just, I am not a lot to talk about. Like, I'm very sorry. I'm not trying to be one of those guys. Oh, no, but sorry. these people may scare you to death. <laughs> it's the Illuminati. I'll I know it is. <laughs> paychecks that are bigger than you make for two comic book series, much less you know uh, doing nothing. You know, I can just throw that, away yeah. money for that. Yeah. So please throw your money away. <laughs> so I don't care if the stuff even comes out. I want to pay my mortgage. So. So, what influenced your art? Like, are there some people that you look up to? Um, early on, comic book wise, uh, uh, early on it was a lot of Jamie Hewlett, Mike Mignola, uh, uh, Frank Miller had a profound influence early on on uh, my work, just my storytelling, um, and my heavy use of blacks. And uh, uh, because Sin City was the book that kind of got me back into comic books after I'd already, you know, done the Marines and everything. It just blew my mind, uh, the original Sin City, when it came out, it was, I had to, I wanted to do what Frank, Frank did, and, and uh, so every day I've just been working towards that, I want to tell my own stories, and uh, I think I can do it better than a lot of people, and uh, I'm definitely willing to put in more time than most people, so that's how I beat them. If you can outdraw me or outright you, or outright me, I'll work you, and uh, it's working. <laughs> I'm dead serious, I, I, I will beat everybody. And, uh, at, I just, I'll find a way, and uh, so that's what I do now. But uh, yeah, the Jamie Hills, Mike Mignola, uh, Andrew Robinson, um, Barry Windsor Smith, guys like that, Arthur Adams. Um, but honestly, nowadays, I, I don't even know what's coming out in comic books. You know, every once in a while, a buddy sends a book, or, or I see a buddy's book on the shelf or something, I pick it up. Uh, but I just, it's like working in a donut factory. First week, you think you're in heaven, but year 13, you're like, if I even smell a donut, I'm, a donut. I'm gonna stab people. <laughs> uh, so uh, that's kind of how it is. Don't come to comic books. Yeah. No, it's just it's. I got tired of. There's a lot of negative things in this industry, and I just removed myself from it, so I can kind of do my own thing in my own positive world. Um, and that was very important to me. A lot of people think, you know, you only do your own stories. No, I'll do a story. I did a story with Joe Hill. It wasn't my story at all. It's just I want people, I want talented people working very hard and passionate about what they do. And I almost don't care about the skill, skill level at that point. I just want passionate, hardworking people. And if I can surround myself with that, I'm going to enjoy what I do. And I don't get that environment at DC, definitely not DC or Marvel. Uh, but even at like areas like Dark Horse, you're still just in this system where you get a shotgun pages out. And, uh, I'd rather, uh, who's it, Kevin Nolan, one of my favorite artists, he always says, uh, uh, be good, don't worry about being late. And uh, because, um, if you think about it, Watchmen, every single issue is late. Oh yeah, yeah. How often do you hear that come up? No, it's one of the greatest graphic novels ever. However, you can get monthly Aquaman until you die every day, and how often are people are going to be celebrating Aquaman and it affected people's lives in a positive manner and they enjoy it and they reread the story, oh, what's Aquaman? Is he talking to this fish? <laughs> no, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares. 